The thoroughbred is a magnificent animal, bred for speed, bred to compete, the sport of kings. Well, West Coast has it by a six. It's the all new Let's Go Racing from Parks Casino and Racetrack. It's action packed and fun for the entire family. Three of them are right together with one for long to go. Let's Go Racing is brought to you by the Pennsylvania Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association. It's fun to see them run. Very pleasant good morning racing fans and welcome here to Parks Racing for Let's Go Racing. Once again, it's our special pleasure to bring you the almost Eclipse Award winning documentary of our friend Bruce Casella of Smarty Jones from his attempt to win the Triple Crown back in 2004 in Dick. Bruce did such a terrific job behind the scenes, stuff we'd never seen. No, he did indeed, and I was there alongside him, and I can attest to how hard he worked and how good he was. And I've been at the Derby 33 times right. to cover it. Never will I cover one I liked more than 2004. Tickets brought to you by the Pennsylvania Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association, the Peter Stable, and our friends at Chapman Ford. Enjoy the documentary on Smarty Jones. What a year it has been for Pennsylvania Thoroughbred Racing. With the passage of slots, Philadelphia horsemen can now look forward to a very bright future. And of course, we experience the incredible story of Smarty Jones. A little Pennsylvania bred captured the hearts of people all over the world. Not just racing fans, but everyday people. Smarty won the biggest race in the world, the Kentucky Derby, then the Preakness, and just missed winning the Triple Crown. It was a period of time I'll never forget, and I'm sure neither will you. Smarty Jones is now off to the breeding shed and hopefully will give us more thrills with his offspring. I want to present to you something very special, the inside story of Smarty Jones as he raced into thoroughbred racing history. Let's begin now at historic Churchill Downs with the run for the roses. The backstretch Kentucky Derby week is like no other barn area in the world. Hundreds of media members and friends of horsemen plot to catch a glimpse of the future Kentucky Derby winner. Like Smarty, huh? He's been worth it, Nick. Six wins. He can tell you all about his wins in Arkansas and everyone. Earlier in the week, trainer John Service gets his first look at what will become a growing media contingent as Kentucky Derby 130 nears. Come that way, guys. Heads up. Of course, John has a job to do, and with the help of stable foreman Bill Foster, Pete Van Trump, and groom Mario Ariaga, Smarty Jones is in great hands. You take everything that you read and hear about the Kentucky Derby and magnify it maybe 10 or 20 times, and that's what it's like. It's a wonderful, wonderful experience. Just being here and having fun and just the experience of being, you know, with uh, good people, good horses, uh, being a Churchill for once. Is the pressure getting anybody at this point? Uh, not yet. I think the pressure will start getting about Saturday morning. Nice leisurely mile and a half. Each and every morning about nine, service meets and greets the media from around the world, fielding questions personal and professional. He's getting his game face on. You know, he was real tough today. He was real aggressive, but he galloped good. I mean, he bowed his neck and, and pulled and galloped around there real nice. And, and uh, you know, he pulled up, stopped, looked, Walked off the racetrack like a true professional. He was uh, rubbing horses in Florida and he was hurt, so he came home to have his family take care of him. He came to a football game because his sister was cheering, and, and that's when we met. Later in the week, the pace will pick up. The owners have arrived, Roy and Pat Chapman. Don't you get that? <laughs> <laughs> he got me on tape. The atmosphere becomes bright with cheer as Pat steals the show. Here comes Smarty. Go get him, Smarty. John, hang on, hang on. <laughs> Roy is filled with pride, moving about in his wheelchair as if it were powered with a jet engine. Get him well and need to get him to the Arkansas Derby. And hopefully Kentucky after that. What's so. got me here is a good wife and a good family. I'm very serious. Hey, Stu. Hey, there's my man. How you doing? There's Mr. Cool. <laughs> hey, Stu. It's Derby Day. The pressure is building. Over 140,000 fans coming to see history. Will it be Smarty Jones? Bill Foster is optimistic. Quietly, I have a lot of confidence in this man. His heart and his ability. 
What's going to happen if it rains? Meanwhile, John Service arrives at the barn around 3 o'clock, nervously pacing, concerned about the weather. His two sons, Blaine and Tyler, are at his side. Tyler is a bit fidgety. Tyler, please stop. That's twice I asked you. I'm not going to ask you again. I don't want to beat my kid on front of television. <laughs> They're building rapidly, so it does look like a wet, late afternoon and evening here. It's like a sloppy race coming in and maybe severe storms. He's never run on this kind of track this sloppy like this. I don't know. I really don't know, Bruce. We're going to find out. I would have rather seen a fast track, to be honest with you. It's now time to get the horse ready, and Smarty knows he's got a big race ahead of him. Smarty, ready to go? Ready to win this thing, buddy? He just, just winked at you. <laughs> you going to win the Kentucky Derby, buddy? I'll take that as a yes. You nervous Wonderful. at all? Uh, a little, little bit. bit. Yeah. yeah. A little bit. Are you calming your dad down? Trying to, at least. <laughs> Seems calm. Just kidding. I think he's calm. He's calm? Yeah, I think so. Pretty sure he is. Smarty, this is what you've been waiting for, buddy. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> After a few finishing touches, it's time to head to the paddock. All right, boys, let's head over. <laughs> time to make the donuts. You too, man. Time to make the donuts, huh? <laughs> so you're gonna make me look bad, son. You're too tall. You're so much taller than I am, I can't handle it. Good luck, John. Thank you very much. Marty! Go, ho, ho, don't clap, don't clap. Oh, 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 oh. Don't do that. After a few tense moments, the trip through the mud is quite an experience. Dad. Bill, good luck we to you, should, my friend. We should have those things, like in the golf thing that says quiet, this please. This is what we've been after, bud. Dad, that says quiet, please. Yeah, really. So should have a big sign. <laughs> Hold up, quiet, please. Yeah, I'll do it. I, I will do it. Well, so far, so good. Pick the tempo up, big guy. Clip your heels. Oh, big boy. Oh, now. Uh, your knees didn't buckle, I noticed, when you got to look at the spires for the first time on a derby day. No, actually, it feels great to be here finally, and uh, we're really excited. We're looking forward to it. Yeah, it's great. Once in a lifetime, bud. With about five minutes to go until post time, the family gathers, nervously waiting for the race of their lives. Whatever happens, buddy, we had a hell of a Oh, John, let me tell you. Alan Rich here is the first down for the 130th Kentucky Derby. Off and running in Kentucky Derby 130. Perfect start for Lionheart. Smarty Jones has a good forward position early. A bit out farther back to his outside comes Reed with some throws. Heading past the half mile pole in the Derby. And it's Lionheart trying to go all the way in front. Lionheart. Here comes Smarty Jones. Quickly up and tackle him on the outside. Reed comes in with the Chris Rex meets him in the fourth spot. Lionheart leads the way. Lionheart confronted by Smarty Jones on the outside. great win. It brings tears to your eyes watching the Chapman's and Service family celebrating. Winning the Kentucky Derby is something you can only dream about, but it happened to them on that first Saturday in May. Two weeks later, Smarty was off to Pimlico, hoping to win the second jewel of the Triple Crown, the Preakness Stakes. Once again, I had John Service mic'd up for sound. 
reality television has never been so good, especially in horse racing. Smarty Jones arrived on the grounds of Pimlico Racecourse early Wednesday afternoon. Pennsylvania bred settled nicely into stall number 40, reserved for Kentucky Derby winners like Seattle Slough and Secretariat. He and his best friend, Butterscotch, discussed their new digs. The next day, with the sun rising over Old Hilltop, Smarty Jones hit the Pimlico Oval for the very first time. On this day and the next, service and exercise rider Pete Van Trump would lightly train Smarty up to the race. I tell you, this horse has come a long, long way. He really, he didn't, he didn't used to be, I mean, he was a freaking handful. Now he's like, now he's like a pony. <laughs> You know, everybody hey, in here yesterday was Hi, bouncing yeah. around in their stalls or anything. Smarty's back here, man. His back with all fours up sleeping. Everything is perfect, and service gives Smarty's owner, Roy Chapman, the thumbs up via the cell phone. Hey, Chap. Everything's super, buddy. Very good, very good. No, I just, I just wanted to let you know we had a real good morning, and uh, everything's looking good, buddy. John's wife, Sherry, is feeling the strain of dealing with the crush of media. She's helping her husband schedule interview requests from around the world. Only problem, she's lost her voice. Better, but I'm trying to whisper so I can save it for later. John continues to do what he can to help promote Smarty Jones and the sport of horse racing. He's asked to attend a charity event as a celebrity bartender. Drink. On Friday night, it's off to the ballpark where he throws out the first pitch at the Orioles game. John was a little off stride, missing the catcher. I choked. I choked. Yeah, a little nervous. Yeah, I wanted to make sure I threw it hard enough. It's race day, and service says he's relaxed, but he seems much tighter than before the Kentucky Derby. Yet, he remains friendly. The conditioner keeps the cameras at a distance from his prized Colt. His foreman, Bill Foster, gave the marching orders. When he was in his hotel room watching television, he called me on the cell phone. He says, what the hell are you doing? He said, you get those people out of there. So, unfortunately, I'm the bad guy. Later in the afternoon, with three hours until race time, it's off to the clubhouse to meet family and friends. John has become a celebrity, signing autographs along the way and shaking hands. Thanks, John. My pleasure. It's back to the barn with an hour and a half to go until race time. Smarty is getting ready. Service is also keeping track of the Flyers back home. The orange and black are winning, and that helps take the edge off. It's killing me not being able to watch it. With the clock ticking down, John and his son Blaine share a moment to reflect on this amazing run to great. Really, I didn't really realize it when we had to go on the third. So I started thinking about it, and I was like, you're going to be talking about it like, for the rest of like, forever. Yeah. Well, just remember, whatever happens has been a good ride. It's time to go. The walkover is chaotic. The cameras are way too close, and service lets them know it. Sir, you're going to have to move back. You're going to get kicked. I'm going to tell you that right now. Smarty seems calmer than all of us. He's unbelievably controlled, despite the huge crowd screaming as he approaches the saddling area. Thank you, Jeff. Look, we'll face him this way, let him stand sideways so he can see both spots. Meanwhile, jockey Stuart Elliott arrives. The strategy is the same as the Kentucky Derby. I, uh, do the same thing, bud. Yeah? Sit as long as you can. Yeah. You know, a couple of them horses are going to be running at the end. Right. Okay. He's handled, he's handled like a pro, ain't exactly he? Exactly good, huh? Hey, you are. I was looking for you guys. Tradition. We can't break tradition. <laughs> I was wondering where I asked Sherry. Yeah, I was wondering where you guys. I asked Sherry. Where's everybody at? They no. said you guys were yeah, already up in the box. I'm superstitious. Michael and I said we got to do it. Good. Yeah, good. good. I like it. Lauren come down the room. She said my mom's a nervous wreck. Really? <laughs> oh, well. What are you going to do? You know how mothers are. Right. Good thing we're not like that, right? Yeah. <laughs> Mom can get nervous. As long as the horse don't get nervous, that's good. And what about Sherry's service? How is she feeling? Very nervous. Just hoping we can do it for everybody. It's riders up. And time to head to the box in the grandstand to watch history. Good luck, Stu. With the Chapman and service family in place, John gets a phone call. It's his son, Tyler who is back home in Philadelphia, watching with a group of nuns 
who are close to the family. You see, Tyler is being grounded for slipping in his schoolwork. John is not only a great trainer, but a great parent as well. No doubt, his 13-year-old son will be a Rhodes Scholar come Belmont time. So read me home? All right, buddy. I love you. All right, I'll hold on for a chappy on, okay? You better be rooting for me, Tyler. For that hook. Whatever happens, it's been a good ride. Right? Oh, Most time for the Preakness, and they're off. Lionheart and Smarty Jones, and Smarty Jones is ahead of Lionheart. Come on, Smarty. Lionheart and Mike Smith nursing along. Here is Smarty Jones. Sit still, Sue. Sit still. Smarty Jones takes that invitation on the inside of Lionheart. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Smarty Jones can pass on left at the 560s marker. Chappie is overcome with emotion, crying with joy. Okay, we gotta get you out, Chappie. Come on, we gotta get you out. Good job, big man. Smarty Jones' win in the Derby was amazing. His run in the Preakness was electrifying. I got goosebumps watching it. That is unbelievable. I got goosebumps myself, Mike. I'm really, really happy with it. You know what you did a hell of a job. Jump into the order. That was I, I, mean, some ride. I think they want me to. I'm so proud of you. Let me tell you something. That's an awesome sight right there, buddy. For the next year, that's your colors are flying. Man, oh my <laughs> All I can say, chap, is wow. <laughs> you know that, Pat? All I can say is wow. I'll tell you the same thing. Oh, my God. A guy from West Virginia and a guy from German Dam didn't. How about it, huh? <laughs> Us ham and eggers did pretty good, didn't we? I just really wanted to do it for everybody. Two jewels of the Triple Crown down and one to go. It's now time to go home and get some much deserved rest before the grueling mile and a half test three weeks from the Preakness. The next chapter will soon be written and the world can hardly wait. A record-breaking performance. No doubt Smarty Jones is a very special horse, one that comes around once in a lifetime. Smarty Mania was at a fever's pitch. The world was now tuned into perhaps a triple crown winner, the very first in 26 years. It was off to the Belmont, the third jewel of the triple crown. Here's more of Smarty Jones, the inside story from Belmont Park. What a send off for the Pennsylvania bread. A police escort through three states, helicopters above, a scene that stirred the emotions of stable foreman Bill Foster. People lined up along the road all the way on the turnpike, coming out of their places, waving and hollering, busloads of kids. The trip took two hours and 27 minutes and Smarty arrived at barn five in good order, entering stall number 10, three down from where the great secretariat once stood. Smarty Jones, the biggest box office attraction to hit New York in some time, we expect. Meanwhile, inside uh, Belmont Park, in trainer John Service one, was participating the in the draw for post now, positions. The way I got to figure, there are two post positions left, one and nine. One of those will be Smarty Jones, and it's number nine. And when Post it got down to the last two numbers, Jones. Um, I'm much happier with the nine than I would have been with the one, five. obviously. Of course is the uh, I think it'll give us a nice run of the first turn and, and uh, you know, kind of the, the game plan that we've had all along. Stu can just watch what's going on inside of him. For the next two days, the talk of Belmont Park was all Smarty Jones. The media contingent was large, and John was concerned for the safety of his horse and others going on and off the track. But despite the press, Smarty took to the Belmont surface like a glove. He goes to a different track. He knows, okay, yep. time to dance. You better get a hold of him. I'm going to tell you that. I got my hands full here, buddy. 
got a long way to go, buddy. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, big boy. You're killing me. Oh, man. So I know we're all going to get those. together there, you guys, when we get this thing settled down. Okay. Yeah. Win, lose, or draw. On Thursday, the Derby and Preakness winner got a visit from the Chapmans. And as always, Pat was in her glory. Look down that stretch. Cheapers, creepers. Oh, my gosh. Just means he'll win by further, that's all. Oh, I hope, I hope. I wish I hadn't had the confidence. <laughs> Later, John Service took a moment to discuss the upcoming race with Roy Chapman. I think just... And, Between and, you and I was. And it's again, and I'm guessing, because I yeah. don't know. I know, we're all guessing. But I think... Just looking at the way they've been training Eddington, yeah. they've been working hard, working fast. I think they're going. I think they're going to try to put him on the lead. I'm not nervous right now. I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm in a good place again. I'm feeling like, you know, if we win, that'll be the best thing that's happened to racing in a while. But if we don't win, we've had a heck of a good time, haven't we, Champy? Yes, we have. It's right. been a wonderful, wonderful trip. I mean, you can't ask for much more unless you ask for the triple crown, right? And just when you think you've seen it all, a group of nuns show up from the Little Sisters of the Poor to give Smarty Jones their support. Oh, Sisters, how are you? Oh, that's great. We're here to pray for you and Smarty. Thank you very much. Later on Friday, a musician showed up showing off his Smarty song, one of 300 written about this three-year-old cult. On race day, John once again wore his blue sport coat, just as he did in the Derby and the Preakness. Hey, I moved, I changed the tie and the shirt. The jacket don't get changed. Most of the afternoon, John and his family sat in the tack room, watching TV on ESPN and later NBC. Philadelphia. Yeah, he's got to break the curse. Yeah, John, we it. broke the curse. What are you kidding me? No, just hold it. Time for somebody to pull it off here. Oh, break the oh. Bro, she got to straighten these guys out, man. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, oh. Ooh, man. I don't think it's as deep as it as it is intimidating. You know, guys, jockeys get used to making moves at certain times, and when you get in on track like this, you got You can't think. Of, you can't look at the track. You got to look at the poles. I'm proud of my family. Yeah. All of them. The girls. Both boys. And they're special people. It was time to head over to the paddock. Come on, let's go. Security was everywhere, and the walkover was well, difficult. You know, it, but Smarty took it well. I mean, everybody's rallying behind him, and we'd sure like to get it done for him. But you know, again, I, you know, our main goal is the Kentucky Derby, and we got that done. And, if we're triple crown winner, then that's great. This is the biggest ever. It gets no bigger than this. And, uh, you know, I, I told all the guys today, if we can pull this off, then we're going to walk into history together. And that's as good as it gets. In the paddock, John and jockey Stuart Elliott discuss the race. Just like we talked about before, you know, if you can get through that first half mile without right. having to do much at all. Right, exactly. And just ride your race from there on out, you know. Okay. I think you'd be a lot better off. And don't forget, I don't think that rail's too good. No. You might want to stay just a little bit off it if you can. Okay. But I think, you know, like we talked about, the less you have to do the first half mile, the better off we'll be. Exactly. And then uh, it's fast. Yeah, it is, it's isn't fast, it? So that's good. Yeah. Us. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't, man, it, I couldn't even get to watch a lot of races, but I guess it's been playing pretty fair. It's been playing pretty fair. Yeah. It seems like really the, out toward the middle of the track's been doing the best, best. running. Okay. You know, about three hole out. Yeah. Curious to see what Purge is going to do. Yeah. Yeah. Should be very interesting. Hopefully we can take that walk, my man. Right into history. That'd be all right, huh? Take that right to King Ranch with us. That's it. Let's... Put the freaking icing on the cake. Yeah. I'm ready, baby. I'm ready. Let's get this game on the road. Good luck, baby. All right. Good job. Have a good trip, Stu. Well, right. <laughs> what Cy Young say, the ball has left my hand. Will he take his place in racing history? We'll see. They're off in the 136 Belmont. Smarty Jones got off to a good beginning today. During the race, the family watched with confidence, but there was concern on the face of John Service. The conditioner did not say a word. When it was over, 
You could see the disappointment. Smarty would not win the Triple Crown. Can Smarty Jones hold on? Here comes Birdstone. Birdstone surges past. Birdstone wins the Belmont Stakes. What horse is that? Birdstone, I think. Wasn't it? As always, John Service was gracious in defeat, congratulating Nick Zito and the connections of Birdstone for a job well done. Who won the Birdstone? I'm looking for Nick. Where's he at? He's right up here. Congratulations, Nick. Good job. Good job. No, good job. You kidding me? Good job, buddy. So there you have it. The ending was not perfect, but it was still an incredible ride. And even though Smarty Jones will never race again, this little three-year-old from Philadelphia Park touched our lives forevermore. The Chapman, the Services, Stuart Elliott, Bill Foster, Pete Van Trump, and Mario Ariaga, and all that surrounded Smarty Jones will never be the same. He showed us it's okay to dream, and once in a while, those dreams do come true. The Pennsylvania Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association is the advocate for Parks Racing's horsemen and has worked hard to secure better lives for the hundreds of trainers and their families that work in the thoroughbred racing industry. Our horsemen benefit from medical coverage, trainer pension plans, and increased purses. Thanks to these horsemen, racing at Parks is the very best, providing entertainment for you and the entire family. The Pennsylvania horsemen are proud to be part of the community and introduce a new generation of fans to the sport of kings. He's a winner, he's a champion, he's an icon, he's a legend. And now he's back in Pennsylvania. Smarty Jones, Kentucky Derby winner, Preakness Stakes winner, standing at Equistar in Anvil, Pennsylvania. The quintessential Pennsylvania bread has returned. Smarty Jones is back home. Please call Rodney Eckenrode or visit equistartrainingandbreeding.com. I think we knew how the story ended there. Yes. There was only one way for the story to end better than that. Mm -hmm. It just didn't quite happen. Right. But I think this past year, Smarty Jones Day, we had a chance to bring Smarty back to the racetrack and what a huge success that day was. No, it was great. Look, Pat Chapman had been talking about it, thinking about it for a while. Our man Bruce Casella really said, hey, look, it's the 15 year anniversary. He's back in Pennsylvania at Equistar Farm right. up in Anvil. Now's the time. And man, it was just such a great day. And, and love the fact that THL 17 was willing to do the show. Neil Hartman and I did it. Kate yeah. Bradar was here with us. It was just great. And to see Pat in, in all her glory <laughs> going out on the track with the horse as he walked up to the paddock. It was phenomenal. What a great day. Yeah, there's so much love from the fans back this morning. Absolutely. But Dick, back 2020, you and I are back for another we season of Let's Go indeed. Racing. So we'll see you next year and have a great holiday from all of us here at Let's Go Racing. Thank you.